All right, so I'm going to go with a more unconventional full house where you flop a set or whatever and the board pairs, um, not where your two pair turns into a full house. Um, what we're going to do here is um, kind of, we're going to make a little bigger pot. So we're going to say everybody goes around, you know, throws in their blinds for, but everybody goes around five or the four of the players before me. So 80s in the pot, blinds for 20. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to raise it to 80 overall. So I'm going to raise 60 because I have a good hand pocket kings. And this guy is to act after me. So pot goes from 80. I raise 60, which is a total of a total of 80. So now pot is 160. So it's 60 for everybody to call. This guy actually has a, a good hand. He would call. He's going to call my uh, 60. Let's put this into... Um, I'll put that in the stacks of five. He's going to call my 60. So pot's now 220. Everybody else... Uh, earn, he's not going to call it. Sorry. Let's make it... We'll, we'll increase it a little. Sorry. Um, sorry. So that was everybody's bet. I raise 60, he's going to call my 60, and then he's going to raise me 100. He's going to he's gonna 3-bet me. Um, he's going to 3-bet me, raise 100. So 220, 320's in the pot. I'm just going to flat call, maybe trying to trap him. There's unlikely I'm going to put him on pocket aces unless I know really well. Right now I have the best hand. I would put him on a hand like he has. Ace-queen, ace-jack, pocket queens, pocket jacks, maybe ace-king, even though it's unlikely because I have two of them. Um, you'll see it's really unlikely after the flop. So I'll just call the 100, uh, the 100. So right now it's 400, 420 in the pot. Flop comes. Again, set up as always. I flop set of kings. Uh, king, six, two of hearts. What does he flop? A flush. In this case, it'd be very hard to put him on two hearts. I would I would say it's possible he has like an ace of hearts, you know, and a, a jack offsuit or a queen offsuit. Or like I said, you know... Uh, two jacks, but one of them could be red or whatever, two queens, one of them could be red. So I might think if he bets out here pot of four, let's say uh, pot was 420, say he bets out, you know, 100, whatever, because he fought the nut flush, he's going to bet something not too small, or not too big, so it's to scare me away. I would call instantly with my kings, because even if I think I'm beat, I don't want to factor in pot, pot odds here. Because I have to know I'm beat. I have to know I want to improve my hand. You're, you have to be very, very sure. You should be 90 to 95 percent sure that you know. You know, if I'm, if there's, you'll see in a sec. Just say I called 100. I see a fourth heart. If he's gonna bet into me again, I'm gonna be certain he has a oh, oh, nine out of ten times he's gonna have a heart, right? So that's when I know my two kings right now, my three of a kind, is not gonna be his flush. He had it on the flop, little did I know, but, you know, it's hard to put him on exactly two hearts, you know. He, I, I, But I think it's very possible that he could have, like I said, two a queen of hearts, queen of spades, you know, jack of hearts, jack of spades, ace jack, and maybe his, uh, his ace is a heart. But little did I know he made the flush on the flop, but I had to call. I had the second best hand in the game, and I improved on the flop. It was unfortunate there was three hearts, you know, and a flush draw is possible. And now there's four, and I'm sitting here like, if this guy's going to bet into me again, which he will, Say he bets 120, yeah, we'll, we'll just say 100, uh, no, we'll say 100 flat just to make it easy. He's betting a small amount again. This time I, I should get suspicious for sure. If he's betting that much, I should, that should say 99% of the time he's got a flush. He wouldn't be betting this little if he wanted me to stay in there. If, uh, if he wanted me to fold my hand, he would kind of bet somewhere near 300, 400, you know, so I could, as an attempt to bluff, it'd be a lot of chips with his bluff. He only has 1,000 left and he's betting a third of his stack. But, you know, he, he I, alarm should be going off in my head that when he bets such a small amount, there's 400, uh, 620 in the pot. When he bets 100, which is just under one-sixth of the pot, you know, bells should be ringing in my head that, you know, he's he's got to have the ace of hearts here. Or, like I said, you know, queen of hearts, queen of spades. And I don't have that beat right now. He has a flush. Four of them are on the board, unfortunately, but I have no red cards in my hand. I have no hearts, so I can't do anything about it. So he bets 100. The pot is 620 right now. And my odds, this is where pot odds should come into play. It, uh, exactly, because I'm going to assume he has the flush, which I should, because with the exact button I've done, I would say 95, 96% of the time, he has the flush. Um, and, oh, again, unless you know he's a real loose player if he bluffs a lot, it's very hard to, you know, say this for sure. That's why I, I would say maybe one out of every 10 hands I use pot odds, but when I do use them, it's a very, very effective tool. Um, I mean, you can use them every hand, like I said, or an, an estimate. And usually you'll be getting some really good odds. I've been betting exactly, you know, where it's very close and making a tough decision. But you got to be sure you're beat so that when you call, you know you need your hand to improve. 
So he bets 100 in the pot of 520. It makes the pot 620. So if I call 100, 100 goes into 620 more than six times. So I'm getting about 6 to 1 on a call, a little over. I'm getting 6.2 to 1 technically, which would be good enough odds to try and hit my full house if I'm trying to be beat because there's three jacks left, three twos left, three sixes. Sorry, I'm pointing the wrong way. Three jacks, three twos, three sixes. Um, and the case six, the case king will also improve my hand, you know. So I have 10 outs, 10 times 2 is 20%, which is 4 to 1 odds. If I make this call, I'm getting 6.2 to 1. Mathematically, this will be the right decision every time. There's no, there's no this or that. You know, if you know your B, if you put get those variables in place that he has a better hand, you have a worse hand. You need to improve. This play will benefit in the long run. Even though I'm a one, one in five chance, I'm a long shot at this point. You know, I'm 80-20 dog. It's worth the call because if I hit this card, which magically I will, pairs the board twos, I have kings full. If I hit this card. He's going to bet into me again, probably. He's got a four flush. He might be, he'll probably be kind of worried. This is where I'll bet kind of heavy, you know. I don't even have enough, ch enough chips for him, sorry. Let me, uh, okay, let's say he bets 220. He still might think he has the best hand. He might have put me on, you know, some sort of lower flush or maybe like, a, uh, you know, a uh, king jack or something. I don't know exactly. So he bets 220 into the pot of 620. I should be, I should probably raise him here. I have a second stone cold nuts. The only hand that could beat me, which he could possibly have, is pocket twos. You know, he might, um, or sorry, yeah, pocket twos, which was the last card. Um, he could have been playing pocket twos a very similar way as well and hoping the board paired. And he got more than the board pairing. He got his quad twos. That's the only hand that could beat me if he had pocket twos. He'd have quads. I'd have a full house, which would just be ridiculously unlucky for you if you went all in. I could never blame you because I have a super good hand. I have a top, top full house. Um he would put in 220, I would probably, you know, I'd probably maybe three times raise him, maybe put in like 660. Uh, a lot of time min raises look real suspicious as well. If I put in 440, it just looks like it'd be hard for him to give up for another 220 when 1,000, you know, is about in the pot. But, you know, if he's really thinking about it, he could fold it because I would have played this a set exactly how I did. You know, that's, again, the more hands you play, the more you'll know that, how I was kind of just calling him and being a little laid back and submissive. I kind of knew he had me beat by the way I was just calling. If I had a better hand, I probably would have raised him at some point. Um, but here, you know, I'm min raising. It just looks like I'm begging him to call. So I would probably three times raise him, make it a tough decision. Maybe he could think I'm, you know, buffing him and trying to that would put him all in or something. If I raise 660 and he only has, you know, 340 left, he, had to, he would have to call off his whole stack. And he probably would because he's almost pocket committed at this point. You know, he put in... Four fifths of a stack, say a stack was around fourteen hundred, he'd probably have to make this call. So I would, you know, three times raise him, he'd call me, I'd win, I have pocket kings. He is not the stone cold nuts. He had the stone cold or he had the nuts before this too, but this changed everything. Because if the board pairs, your flush is always vulnerable. So there it is, guys. That's pot odds. Right now I'm gonna put up probably a title screen. Maybe I'll write on a piece of paper if I don't know how to work my computer and stuff. But I'll tell you exactly when your opponent bets um, a certain percentage of the pot, I'll tell you your odds immediately um, and what hands you should be calling and folding with that. Um, one more thing I want to go over with pot odds is that a lot of times if the pot isn't so big and, uh, you know, it's getting, it, it's just starting out, you know, blinds are 5'10 and say my starting, no, so yeah, say blinds are 5'10 and my starting stack is 500, so I have 50 big blinds. If it's 5'10 and everybody's in for 50, and I have a flush draw, say, which, again, flush draw odds for the next card to see after the flop, if I want to see the turn, I should be getting 4 to 1 odds on a call. So say um, I'm the last one to act, only one person bets. Say he bets 30, which is, you know, three-fifths the pot. It made the pot 80. Everybody else folded. Um, it's 30, a risk of 30 for me, and a reward for 80, which is less than 4 to 1 odds. It would need to be at least 120 for me to call a bet of 30. That's the type of situation where I would say almost ignore pot odds and just kind of rely on your brain and stuff you've always known. When you're calling small bets like that, and I, I could get a monster hand like a flush, it's only me and him in the hand, I would say it's not, I, I couldn't blame you if you called a bet of 30, even though your pot odds were not justified and your math would say it's the wrong call. But when it's a small amount, like 30, and you have a chip stack of 500, maybe it's the second or third hand of the tournament, 
even though your pot odds mathematically are not correct, it's not still not a bad play in the long run because you still could win all those chips off of him. And it's only the first bet. Again, he could be bluffing. He could have a weaker hand than you. Your, you know, your ace high flush draw could be the best hand. So there's certain th- There's a lot of things you don't know with pot odds, and there's only maybe uh, you know 25 times in my life I've ever been certain that he has a better hand than me, and then I need this exact card or I need to hit one of my outs to improve. So where 25 times I've been 100 percent sure that pot odds have helped me make the right decision. So um, other than that, you know, you got to kind of rely on just common sense. You know, don't bet too much when you don't have too strong of a hand and all that. So that's just the rest of poker, which. I'll try and get into all of it as we go, but next video I'll have a special uh, chip trick. You'll learn the famous uh, chip shuffle, so um, I will be doing that, and I'll give a in detail like description of it as we go. You can see it once here, but uh, just a very basic. Oh, sorry, that was a little off camera, but not very basic. But once you learn it, and um, once you learn it and start to do it and practice it a lot, you can start with six chips. You can start with ten. I advise starting with six chips, two, seven, to three. But anyways, as I always do and get off topic, um, that will be the next video. And after that, we'll get into another interesting topic. I don't know what it will be yet, but next video of uh, this, the series, the fifth video, will be the uh, famous chip shuffle trick and how to do it in detail. So everyone, no matter how small, big your hand is, how much you... You know, you can always train your muscles to do a chip trick, so I'll be showing that in the next video. So thanks for watching this, guys. Uh, please like, leave a comment, what I could do better, if the angles are bad, or if I'm not talking loud enough. Um, if I'm leaving certain parts out, it's really hard to, you know, always remember to explain everything, you know, in detail. Because, you know, I'm, I'm sort of thinking a couple steps ahead sometimes, so I might forget something. So let me know what you guys think. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and uh, make sure you uh, watch the next video. Thanks. Okay guys, here's where the chart will come into handy. I'll put the chart up for like the last 15 seconds of the video. Just pause it if you want to see it. I'm going to go over a live demonstration just so you can exactly see how the math works out um, for pot odds. So just basic things. This is it, it, mostly effective when your head's up because you know what, exactly what he's betting. You have your odds to call. Or again, if he's the only one who bets and everybody else folds, that's when these odds are exactly what they are. So when, I'm, when it's one-on-one, -on -one, use these odds as a real quick chart to get to where you want to go. So say the, the pot is 100, say this is blind somehow, whatever. It's just you and him in the hand. If he bets the pot, odds are 2 to 1. Hopefully you can see that. Pot increases to 200, your odds to call 100. 2 to 1 odds. If he bets the pot, 2 to 1 odds. Uh, we'll take that. Pot's 100 again. If he bets half the pot, if he bets 50, odds are 3 to 1. Hopefully you'll see the trend here in a sec. Um, it all goes up by 1, you know, every time he bets... Uh, which the numbers I'll give you here in a sec. It all goes 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 4 to 1, and 5 to 1. So this odds is 3 to 1. If he bets half the pot, the pot's 100, he bets 50% of the pot, which is 50. It's 50 to call, 150 divided by 50, 3 to 1 odds. 4 to 1 odds, let's make the pot uh, 60. So pot 60, blinds, he throws in 20. 4 to 1 odds is when he bets a third of the pot. So 33% of the pot, 20, goes into 60 three times. One third of the pot he bets, you're going to get four to one on the call because the pot is now 80, it's 20 to call. This is where you want for your flush draws, minimum. You, you, This is like borderline. So you should know if you have a six of hearts and the flop comes nine and there's a ten of hearts, that's when you should be sitting here. If he's first to bet, you should be prepared to call a pot odds bet based on nothing. Again, reads and tells or everything if you can pick something up, but just mathematically. If there's 60 in the pot and you see you have a flush draw before he bets, you should know. You should be calling anything that he bets less than 20. You should be calling if he bets 5. You should be calling if he bets 10. You should be calling if he bets 15. 20 is borderline. Like I said, that's exactly 4 to 1 odds. A flush draw is just under 4 to 1 odds. It's 19%, which is just under 4 to 1 odds. So, uh, so you should kind of just be ready to do that in your head. And once you get this simple chart memorized for heads up, it's very helpful. I use it you know, in half the hands when I'm one-on-one, -on -one, whether it be the last person attorney, or I do, I'm just playing with my buddy, you know, I just say, down for it, you know, whatever, let's play a heads-up game for, for uh, you know, for five months or whatever. Um, okay, and last one, it, or not last one, but next one. Uh, 80 in the pot, just to make this easy, bets one-fourth uh, of the pot, five to one odds, which is what you're getting on your open end straight draw. So he bets 20 into 80, pot's now 100, 20 for you to call, 5 to 1 odds, which is what you, you want better than that on your open ended straight draws, which are 16% per card, which is about 5 to 1 odds. Um, so there you go. There's the most important ones. Maybe I'll do a full house here. We'll see in a sec the full house odds.